What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about how the hell you make a white noise swell. This is pretty common. You need to learn this. All right, the first swell we're going to do is um, we're going to just take a lead sound, kind of like last week. In fact, let's take the same exact one. I think it was called Cream something. Cream Flash. We're going to try this. We're going to start with this sound. It's a nice sound because it's got a lot of saw waves to it. And we're going to modify this to make it into a sweep. So first of all, I've got three oscillators here. Um, let's just work with these two. I don't know why, just just do. And let's add some noise to it. Let's add, uh, let's add brown noise. So we're gonna try to just add more texture. I'm just thicking it, I'm thicking it up with um, just sound, just to give it more texture and depth. It can, um, that way when we do a sweep with the filters, it gives a little bit more uh, something to work with. Okay, that sounds great. So um, let's turn off filter one and let's just work with this. We're gonna actually, add two different filters to this. The first one we're going to do, um, let's just do that. So we're going to get rid of this macro and we're going to add in, uh, let's just drop in filter number one and let's do a long attack. Okay. Let's uh, do it from here to here, and let's just make the attack longer. Now notice I'm not changing the pitch, I'm just messing with a filter. We're not trying to make a riser, just a filter. Okay, so we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of tone in that. If I want to reduce the tone, I could pull these amplitudes of the oscillators down a little bit, and I can just have a little bit more brown noise. Okay. So now I don't have quite as much tone because sometimes the tone can be interruptive to uh, the actual sound you're trying to get. Now I just apply this filter. Okay, let's get rid of these macros here and. Experiment a little bit and find the note I want. This could this could really bring up the note. So if the resonance is too high, you're going to hear the note even more. So now let's drop um, envelope number two one on that. Pretty cool. We got some movement going on. Now let's um, drop a little bit of uh, panning. And um, we'll just move over here and drop some panning on here so that we have something to work with. Okay, so now we've got some movement going on back and forth. And then we'll add uh, this envelope to here to... I don't want, I want the uh, rate to go up, but I I don't want to just hold, when, if this swell gets held, I don't want it just buzzing at the top of the pan. So I want to reduce the amplitude of the pan down to here afterwards. So I'm going to drop it, the envelope on here and I'm going to do what's called a negative. So I'm pulling down. So it's going to start up here and go down. So at first we're going to get quite a lot of, um, we're going to hear a lot of the pan movement and then afterwards it'll, even out. Now, um, that might be a little too fast and too much, so we're gonna... And let's maximize this a little more. There we go. Now as that panning isn't too annoying, um, just because if it's too much back and forth, it, it makes more of a buzz than it does an actual sweep or swell. 
So if we wanted to bring it a little bit more amplitude or less amplitude, we could drop this into um, these controls as well. In fact, let's do it so it starts off with a strong note and then decreases as the um, note is held out. So we're going to do something like this so that you get more noise and less, um, n less tone as the note is held. Now, you probably noticed as, as the note got to its maximum value there after the attack was, um, was finished and it hit the uh, decay level, that the tone decreased significantly. That way, if there's other notes being played, it's not interrupting that. So that is an example of making a swell out of a lead patch. Now let's talk about doing it with just noise. All right, let's look at an example of how to make a white noise swell in Massive. Let's just start off by just creating a new sound. So we're going to go to File, New Sound. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off everything. I'm just going to just turn it off. It defaults when you make a new sound by uh, giving you a few things. Of course, I'm going to leave the amp on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, let's go ahead and turn the inserts off. All right, what we're going to do is let's just play a note on the keyboard. So I have nothing right now. Now, if I turn up the amp, I'm getting some noise now from uh, the white noise area. Now, when I'm creating a white noise swell, you can actually create it out of other noises. You don't have to use white noise. You could use what they call brown noise, bright noise, tape hiss, metallic. So like if I said, um, I don't know, let's say aluminum. It's kind of the sound of something breaking, okay? Now it's not swelling, it's just coming in. What we're gonna do is now create a swell. So I'm gonna actually use white noise because that's usually the one you wanna use. The color on this dictates how sharp of a sound you want. So let's listen to this, figure out what color we want. I'm gonna want it to go all the way up to the top. but I'm going to control the top of the frequency using the filter. So I want something that has a little bit of body to it. So I'm going to just choose a choose it about right here for the color. Let's boost the volume a little bit so we can hear it a little bit better. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use one filter. We're going to keep this pretty simple. I'm going to put my uh, filters in serial mode instead of parallel. The mix is going to be on just the uh, filter one. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a bandpass filter. We're going to boost this a little bit. I don't hear anything yet because the cutoff is so low. But if I bring it up and I bring up the bandpass, bandpass is kind of like a cue. Maybe bring, bring up the resonance. Resonance is going to make it sound a little bit different because it's going to be uh, boosting certain, fr certain frequencies over others. But we're going to use that to kind of come up with a sound. All right. That sound pretty good. I've got a good full body uh, white noise there. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do, we want this filter to do that dynamically. So we're gonna go. All right, so we're gonna do that, of course, with an envelope. So let's start off with uh, envelope. Number four is our volume, so we're going to actually just tell it, hey, we don't want you to come in right away. We want you to swell in. Like that, all right? And then once we get up to the uh, top of the note, of the amplitude, we want it to hold. And then we want it to fall down a little bit. Okay? I want it to actually... This, again, is totally preference, but I like to have a tail on my white noise, okay? So now let's jump over. So that sounds pretty good. When I release the note, I'm releasing now. Falls off really nicely. All right, let's go to uh, envelope number one. We're going to drop it into our filter. We're going to add it to this, and we're going to tell it how much we want to do. Now, before we even play, I know we're going to have to add some attack. We're going to boost the level. Let's not have any release yet. Okay, the sound, did you hear that coming in? Although at the end, it's releasing way too, mu too uh, much. So I don't want it to fall off to a low frequency sound and it's going up too fast. So we're gonna boost the attack.
All right. It's the volume is a little too gradual. We're going to reduce the attack on that. And there we go. Sounding pretty good already. So again, what's going on is that um, the envelope, the amplitude envelope, is dictating the uh, slow attack and the long release. But it's this cutoff, it's the bandpass cutoff that's actually dictating um, the sound of the frequencies being applied are being played. Almost sounds like an ocean, but it's kind of nice. It's really nice, actually. Now, if we want a little bit brighter, we can turn up the color again on the noise area. And we can add a little EQ if we want. Pretty nice. All right, so now I want to add a little bit of reverb. We're going to just add, I'm going to say a small reverb to it. Just gives it a little more color and a little more texture. Um, the release on the amplitude is a little slow. I'm going to reduce that a little bit. That's better. Okay, that's sounding pretty good. Now, what if we wanted to add a little bit more, something more interesting than this? Because um, there's no movement other than a swell. It's a very nice swell, but it's very, it's very, this would be great for maybe a ballad or something like that. But if we're using this in a dance song, we're going to probably want a little bit more dynamics in it. So just like last week with the riser, let's add some kind of dynamic to it. My first thing I'm thinking of is maybe a little bit of vibrato. Believe it or not, you can add a little vibrato into, uh, into a white noise and it, it actually sounds good, like that. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to kill the decay on this. Okay, I want it to just go up and attack the attack, and I'm going to attach this to uh, my depth. So we're going to have this dynamically change. So it gives a, in, in this case, it's giving a little bit of vibrato until it reaches a max. And then the depth kind of comes down. So that's not as much vibrato. If we wanted to, we could say all the way. And so that it gets up to the top point and continues to shimmer. I think I like that a little bit better. If we wanted to, we could have the rate be changing as well. Let's just do that as well. Maybe do something like this. Actually, I'm going to make that go a little bit faster. I want it to get to a point where you can't really tell the vibrato is there. So maybe start here and go to about there. Cool. That sounded pretty good. Now let's add something else to this. Let's add a little bit of uh, amplitude. Just like last week, we're going to add a little bit of variance in the, um, in the panning. So we're going to add a little bit of this. Hey, that gives it some back and forth through our speakers. And you can only hear that if you have stereo speakers on. If you're listening through an iPod or iPad, it might be a little hard to hear. But I've got panning going back and forth from speaker to speaker. If we want to increase that rate, we can do that just like last week. We can just grab an envelope and drop it on our rate. That sounded pretty good. So let's start here and go to there. Uh, Ooh, it's not fast enough. Let's drop a different envelope on that. Let's drop, um, oh, let's see here. Where, where was that? So number five, let's drop envelope number three into that and then control a long decay. Okay, uh, sorry, slower attack. There we go. All right. It's a little too noticeable. It's nice, but it's a little too noticeable. So we're going to back that out just a little bit. Um, let's pull it down so that it never gets that quite that fast. That sounds really nice. 
And then for that three, I'm actually going to give it a release so that even in the in the D swell, or when the triggers release, you still get a little bit of that panning back and forth as it's dropping off the note value. So here's a question. What if we want to add a little bit more dynamics to it? What about a pump? Waves has a great plugin called One Knob Pumper. We can just add that to this uh, synth afterwards and uh, start applying it. So. Now we're getting that ducking effect that a side chain compression would do. Okay, but what if we don't have one knob pumper? Let's say we uh, don't have that kind of tool and we just want to do that in massive. We can do something very similar. It's not exactly the same, but it's similar. By uh, taking an LFO and making a square wave, so we're going to turn on the square wave, putting the uh, ratio to you're going to have to turn on the sync which is so that you can control this square wave every quarter note here we're going to drop that on the amplitude of the white noise and we're going to add white noise to this now we're going to have to turn up the amp to hear the effect now we've got a pump in the quarter note now what if we wouldn't didn't want that pump to be there the whole time well we can graduate this amplitude by actually doing it slower by going like this we drop an envelope let's say it's just uh envelope number one uh, not number one let's drop number three we're going to maximize the attack or get pretty close to the attack and give it a little bit of decay so that after it gets to the top it can decay off a little bit as far as the pump effect and now let's try it let's see what happens if we do this so we're going to Now we got a cool little effect going on there. The panning is going nutso. And now you can hear the pump starting to pull out a little bit. Very slowly. That's nice. Very nice. So that, there's some uh, options for creating white noise. You don't have to do all of those, of course, but you can... Uh, add some of those in to, to give the pump effect, to give variety and dynamics to your white noise so that's not just a simple swell. That's it. That's it for this week. Come back next week and we'll have another video for you. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or suggestions on what you'd like to hear me talk about. And as always, keep recording and stay frosty. Oh, and keep writing. Writing's good. <laughs>